Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Um, we are meeting in here today because I have my little heater on. And I like to sit in here and read my Bible by myself and get warm. So, I'm going to open up my tablet. I hope that you've all had enough turkey and dressing that you don't really want any more till the new till next year. <laughs> and next year won't be too long because we've just got a couple of months, right? Um I don't know if you guys um wait a second, let me get in this thing. I've got Chris's tablet. Close. It says it's on five percent. Have you ever He's got it open to Candy Crush because he plays Candy Crush all the time. I'm looking for my Kindle. We'll just go to the Blue Letter Bible. Anyway, you know where I'm at? In the bathroom floor. <laughs> I sit next to the heater. And we have this little heater in the bathroom. <laughs> and it's one of these you know, um, infrared or however you call it. And so I got it on 72 degrees and it's blowing on me and it feels so good. I know a lot of people have gotten snow and blizzards and crazy weather. So, um, I feel sorry for you. Let's find our place and where we're going to be. See if it'll find it. X O dust. Um, we're going to be doing chapter 17 tonight, 18 and 19, okay? All right. So anyway, I hope y'all had a good Thanksgiving. I hope you ate lots of food. I hope you tried some card belly cook recipes. Um, I have been gone for 10 days. Because I have been going like crazy, nonstop. We have Thanksgiving here on Thanksgiving. I pulled out all of our Christmas decorations. I hung up some um, crystal balls, real pretty clear balls, underneath my light fixtures today. And I was going to come on live with y'all and let y'all watch me. But it was so hard, I was afraid I would drop one and might say a bad word if I did. So I didn't. Why? Because I'm fleshly and I'm not always perfect. So anyway, I did drop one and break it. Just one of the smallest ones. So um, I might show you all those before we go off the air tonight. And I still have a couple of things that I want to do to decorate with. Uh, but my tree is up. Amy decorates one side the way she likes it. And then we turn the tree around and we decorate the back side the way me and May like it. So, it Chris could care less if we ever had a tree. When we come out of church Sunday, I was in the nursery keeping the babies. And when we come out of church Sunday, Chris said, Tammy, guess what? And I said, what? He said, the church has a beautiful tree. And I said, they do? And he said, yes. He said, it's white. It's real white, and it has a bunch of lights on it. And I said, well, that's good. And he said, but that's all it has on it is lights, and it's beautiful. And he said, you don't need to put all that stuff on the tree. You just need to turn the lights on. And I said, Chris, really? That is not what I'm going to do. But as I sit here, get I'm going to talk about the did the other day with Moses and Egypt, and they had eight manna that the God that our God provided them. And we're going to start in chapter 17 tonight. We're going to talk about the first thing they did was mumbled and grumbled and got mad because they didn't have any water to drink. So they started really aggravating Moses about it. And so Moses goes to God and he says, what "To do these people are getting ready to stone me." And God tells him, I go up to Mount, I think it was Mount Sinai, 
He said he tells him he's gonna let him hit a rock and that he's gonna provide him water for the people and he did and it worked. And he said, um when I was reading in my commentary Bible, it said at the bottom that Jesus Christ and how um when they struck the rock Jesus Christ. Um, it provided water, living water, for us, um, and so it's, a, it's symbolic, okay? There's a lot of stuff in here that's that way. Now, so anyway, they got some water. Next thing that happened was Moses' father-in-law came to meet him, and I was wondering about it because, you know, he sent um, his wife away and so I guess the the her daddy got word that Moses was back in Israel and that he had escaped Egypt and so he was ready to take her back to him and their two sons but it was a good meeting and he actually gave Moses some advice because Moses was having to meet with all these different people and tell them God's commandments and he was being a judge is what he was doing, almost like a court judge. And he was trying to guide the people. And he had so much to do. His father-in-law was like, what are you doing? You know, you can't do this. It's going to kill you. So he told him to appoint good men that were reputable. And he knew, knew God's laws and commandments. And let them take care of the small stuff. And then if they had something big, they could come to Moses and he could clear it up. And that was really good for Moses. And it was good for the people as well. And so I thought that was a good example of order and how we need order. And how even if sometimes we like to be in control of everything, um, it's really nice when we can depend on other people to help us um, in every situation that we have. And that we should... Um, also have friends and people in our life that are reputable and good so that we can go to them and talk to them about things in our life and that they could give us some good advice too. So I thought that was really good. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about, let me open it up. Let me open this back up. See, so we talked about chapter 17. 18. Sorry, y'all. Now he tells him um, that the people have to be sanctified, he has to be sanctified, and they all have to be ready, and that Moses is going to come up to Mount Sinai, and that's when he gives them the Ten Commandments. And um, he tells them, be ready against the third day, for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds to the people round about, saying, Take heed of yourselves, that you not go up on the mount, or touch the border of it, whosoever touches the mount shall surely be put to death. So this was a big deal. Only Moses and um, those that were appointed could touch the mountain and be on the mountain. And they had to be sanctified. Matter of fact, he even tells them uh, somewhere in here, and I remember reading it, that they were... They weren't even to be with a woman or anything before they... In other words, their mind was supposed to be on God, 100%, which is really hard. Um, oh, and I forgot to talk about Amalek. Uh, Joshua is in this chapter, uh, in these chapters, and Joshua will eventually take over the people and actually be the one to carry them into the, the promised land. Uh, because Moses doesn't get to. They, they, they stay in the wilderness for 40 years. It's crazy. And I asked Chris the other day, I said, how come Moses' father-in-law could travel 
to see him, bring his wife back and his children, and then return back home. But they were stuck in the wilderness when they should have been able to get out of the wilderness in a few weeks. And Chris said, because of their attitudes, God didn't allow them to leave the wilderness. He don't, he don't even allow Moses to leave the wilderness. It's really sad. And so, but, but Joshua will be the one to bring them out. But Joshua fights the Amalek, he, uh, fights with Amalek. And I wanted to tell you this, and I told y'all that the wilderness is, um, this also signifies if you're saved and you're, you're born again and been washed by the blood of Christ, you are part of the church. And this, saint, this wilderness symbolizes, a lot of people think Canaan um, is a representation of heaven and it's not. Canaan is a rep representation of a, an abundant life, okay? So, um, the wilderness signifies our flesh and sin and not just that, but how a lot of us live, even if we're saved, that's all we do. We get saved and we look forward to the day we get to heaven and we don't really work for God and we don't really talk about God and we don't tell anybody about God and we keep it all to ourselves. That's part of being in the wilderness because when you do that, you um, are excluded from a lot of blessings that, the, that God could bless you with um, and it excludes you from the relationship that you need to have um, that could be even richer so that you could uh, have an abundant life. You know, Christ said that he came here not to just sit, uh, save um, good people, that he, he came here for sinners, and he also says that he came here so we could have an abundant life. If he didn't want us to have an abundant life, he would let the Holy Spirit come down, um, show us our way to salvation, and then he would pull that Holy Spirit back, and we would be left here without the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit helps us have an abundant life. His Word helps us have an abundant life. Sharing the good news helps us have an abundant life. All of his blessings help us to have the abundant life. So let's not be like these people grumbling and moaning and complaining and let's get to Canaan because Canaan is not heaven. Canaan is the abundant life. That these people weren't willing to go the extra mile and take the extra step in their faith to uh, get across that border. They just didn't believe that God was going to do what God said he was going to do. And so he kept them in the wilderness. And we don't want to be that way, do we? Um, so anyway, remember that too, because I forgot to talk about that. But everybody has to um, listen. They get to see the presence of God. They get to see Him over the mountain. They get to see the smoke. They get to hear the thunder. And um, I mean, I can't imagine, you know, what that was like. And, and the, how much Moses had on him um, and how responsible he felt for these people. But I'm, I'm just glad that he did follow God and um, at least got them out of Egypt. He, he didn't get them past the border into the promised land, but at least he got them out of Egypt, right? And so Jacob will take up with that next. And the next time we meet, we will talk talk about the um, Ten Commandments. It says we are to occupy until he comes or we I can't read the rest of it because my little thing's in the way. It says we something. Make it to heaven maybe? Um, but yes. One day we'll all be in heaven and, and spiritually the Bible says we're actually in heaven Leave places already. Those of us who are born again, part of the church, we're actually in heavenly places. So 
We are, our flesh is here. Another thing is Amalek signifies the flesh. And so when Moses, when they're fighting the battle, okay, I'm going to say this too, when they're fighting the battle against the Amaleks, Moses was to hold his rod up, and as long as the rod was held up, they were prevailing and winning the battle. But the minute he got tired and his hand started to fall, they started losing the battle. Um, and isn't that how it is with us in our flesh? It's the same way with me. And even just doing this Bible study. Um, I mean, we had like 40 people on here. Now we got like 20. It always drops when you bring up the Word of God. It always, I mean, people just, even if we're Christians and even if we're trying to do right, it's like we think we don't need to hear it or they're not going to say anything that I don't already know or um, our flesh interferes with, um, our spiritual side and all of us battle the flesh. I battle the flesh. I was tired tonight. I didn't feel good. I thought I'm not going to do it and then I thought yes I am. I'm going to go and sit in my bathroom floor and I'm going to feel this nice heat that God provides me. I don't know what I would do without heat. My favorite things in the world, what, some of my favorite things in the world are hot water in the shower. I just love it. I love to sit in front of a heater, and uh, I mean, there's just little things that I just love, you know. I love to be in a nice bed with warm sheets and blankets, and, and just the security of it, you know. And we should love the security that the Bible gives us, and the way that God really wraps His arms around us if we just give Him a chance to. So I came in here in my bathroom, and I sat on the floor, and I got warm, and I read my word, and then I got excited. you got to feed it to really want to share it. And you gotta, you got to feed it uh, to battle the flesh. And so it's hard sometimes, I'm not going to lie, for me to always be on here. It's good for me, and it's good for you. Um, so just always pray for me. That, that I can battle my flesh because I have flesh just like everybody else. And just like this was a, as an example to us, Amalek is a symbolic of the flesh. Moses was prevailing when his hands were up and as his hands fell, the battle got worse and they didn't do good. Well, think about that. If our hands are up and we're receiving stuff from God then we're going to prevail against our flesh, just like Moses prevailed against Amalek. And he even had to get some help, some people to help him hold up his hands. So I think it's okay that we have each other to help us hold up our hands, okay? Help us prevail. Um, I mean, we should, we should be able to do that without having... By just answering to God, but in all reality, we do need some help sometimes from our friends, just like Moses did, to uh, finish up that battle. Okay, so remember that sometimes, y'all. Um, life is not always easy, and life is not always rosy, but the good thing is all the promises that we have um, will get us excited if we just meditate on them. Okay? I know that some people on here are lonely, and I know that some people on here are sick during the holidays, um, and they have things going on in their life that they would have never dreamed they would be in, in, in this position, or God would place them in this position. Um, and I just want to say to you that God is in control, and He knows exactly what He's doing. Um, if you're lonely, then try your best. If you don't have any family, if you have family, tell them you're lonely. Don't just sit around and not tell them you're lonely. Tell them you're lonely. Try to find a neighbor. Go to church. Find a friend at Sunday school. Do something so that you're not by yourself on the holiday. There's so many people that would love to invite uh, people in, but they, they can't do it if they don't know who you are, okay? So don't be embarrassed. And don't feel like you don't belong or you don't fit in. Because if anybody's a Christian and they're a child of God, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. 
and they will love on you just like you would love on them. So don't feel like you're a burden or you can't ask somebody, okay? Y'all, uh, keep everyone in your prayers. Let's pray for each other. Um, I've really only got one family, not a family. I asked on Real Southern Woman one week if you would write me a letter. And the reason I want people to write me letters is because if they don't, if they don't think a person needs enough help that they can't sit down and write a letter to me, then they probably don't need the help. That's how I look at it. I've only gotten two letters. One was for an elderly woman and one was for a family. Now, God has not laid it on my heart to help a family. Um, and I've even prayed about it, but that's just not something that I want, you know, there's a lot of people out there that help families this time of year. I wanted to help somebody that's older by their self and don't have the extras, okay? And they live on their social security and that's all they ever have. I That's what I want to do. So if you know somebody like that in your life or you got a friend like that, write me a letter and send it. It's Post Office Box 1776, Dallas, Georgia, 301. Three, two. That's Post Office Box 1776, Dallas, Georgia, 30132. Send me a letter. Tell me how you're feeling. Tell me about the person. And then I'll pray about it. And whatever God feels like, I mean, and then whatever I feel like God wants me to do, um, then I will do for them. But um, I can't do it if no one takes the time out to even write the letter. Okay? So remember that. Um, and I guess that's it for now. I hope y'all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope y'all a whole bunches. My, my good friend, Missy Patty, sells, is selling um, jewelry every night, practically, until after Christmas. And I really do have fun watching it and buying it. And yes, it's, it's $5 every time I buy something. I'll probably spend too much. But I'm going to give a lot of it that I know I'll some of it looks cute, then I get it, and I'm not that crazy about it. And so I'll probably give a lot of it um, to Goodwill or somewhere that people can get get gifts. A lot of y'all are telling me to go to the women's shelter and do that too. Um, but I'm about to go watch Missy Patty. She has the cutest stuff. I've been wearing it on my cooking shows, and it is so cute. I just love those green wood beads that I got the other day. They almost look like a wreath around your neck. And I wore them out shopping with Chris on um, Black Friday. And I had so many compliments on them. And they were just like, I wore a red t-shirt, and I wore those beads. And then they got a, they got a balls for the ear, the ear um, earrings are like these little green balls, and it's just so cute. You know, I like to dress fun. I had something in my hair when May got home, and it was a bow. You know, I still, I still dress like I'm a teenager. Not look like a teenager, but May said, Mama, what have you got in your hair? No, that was the day I think I had the roses in it. I said, roses, and she said, what are you doing? And I said, that's just what I like. And she said, well, are you trying to be, uh, she said, are you trying to be funny? And I said, no, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just being me. And she just thought it was kind of cheesy, you know. And I said, I don't care. That's what I like. That's what I'm going to wear. It don't matter to me if people like it or not. It makes me happy. And if it makes me happy, I'm going to wear it. Um, and we should be that way. We shouldn't worry about what the world thinks, you know. Um, but anyway, I hope y'all got a nice heater this winter. If you don't have one or you know somebody needs one, then let me know. These things are amazing. They really are. I had one of these down in our trailer in Pensacola. It was bigger than this one, but it would heat up the whole trailer. It really would. They're amazing. So we keep this one in the bathroom to keep the bathroom warm. Yes, I'm in the bathroom floor, but it's fun to me. I got my, I just washed these blankets today. Mm, they smell so good. And um, tomorrow, I think I'm, I, I think I'm gonna take the dogs and let them get cleaned up. I don't know, or I might shave them. Whatever. I hope y'all having a good night. I could just talk forever. My mom used to tell me I could talk to a brick wall, and I believe her. Don't you? <laughs> Let's say our prayers. And um, it's so good to be with y'all today. And I will 
um, take y'all in there and let you see the Chris, the balls on the uh, light fixtures after prayer tonight. And then um, I'm going to do some more stuff and hang some ribbon and stuff there too. And so when I do that, I may bring y'all on live. I got to show y'all how to make bows too. Because I was at my party last night and there was three women there that did not know how to make a bow out of wired uh, ribbon. So I might come on here and do that tomorrow with y'all too. So let's say our prayers and then we'll go take a look at them. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for um, having each other. We thank you for this show. We thank you for the internet because without it in Facebook, we couldn't get together and love on each other, pray for each other, and study your word. Um, we thank you for the friendships that you have given us through um, Real Southern Woman and Collard Valley Cooks. And we thank you for the opportunities that you have uh, brought our way to uh, make our family uh, feel your love and warmth um, through whether it be food or your word or in good deeds or whatever it is we can do. We pray that you work through us um, so that your light can shine, especially during this time of year. I pray that you make us the kind of people that people, other people, see that we're full of joy and they want to be a part of what we have. Um, we just thank you so much for dying and giving your blood so that we can live an abundant life here on this earth. Because if you weren't here, Lord, there would be nothing abundant about it. Um, thank you for everything. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to go take a look, y'all. It's so cold in here, that never even turned off. It normally, once it reaches a certain temperature, it goes off and then it blows air for a few minutes. And then, and, the, and then it comes back on when it needs to. So, it's pretty doggone cold tonight. All right, let me get up. Let me get up. I'm an old woman. No, I'm not old. But I got a pillow in the floor so I can put my knees on it.